Looking up at the lunar surface is pretty amazing, but the stuff that makes the moon inhabitable may lie just beneath the surface. Digging a bit deeper with NASA's Scarab Rover, next on Real World. NASA researchers, along with scientists and engineers from Carnegie Mellon University, have gathered on the big island of Hawaii to run operational tests on a prototype lunar rover. Hawaii may not seem like the place to assess a rover designed to operate in the darkest and most frigid of places, but the slopes of Mauna Kea's volcano are a pretty fair comparison. The reason is the soil, the dirt left behind by volcanic eruptions. It's similar to the moon's surface, which was also formed by volcanic eruptions. This rover, called Scarab, is designed to assess the lunar surface and what lies just below. So the overall scenario is to understand what resources are available on the moon that we could use to drink or breathe or as fuel. David Wettergreen is an associate research professor at Carnegie Mellon University. He leads Scarab's software and autonomy development. And it's been particularly configured to transport a one meter drill. So the structure you see in the middle of the robot is the drill. Scarab can carry that drill and then deploy it to the ground for, for coring operations. Once on the moon, Scarab's function is to locate lunar soil, or regolith, that contains useful chemicals like hydrogen, oxygen, and other valuable resources. And that's an important job. If astronauts can't find it on the moon, they would have to bring it from Earth, and that would make any kind of lengthy stay much too expensive. So a robot like Scarab on the moon uh, would go prospecting, essentially. You would go to an area where you think uh, you might want to have a lunar base and look around to see what, what resources are there, to measure their abundances, so then you could design the, the next stage of the mission where you go into production. The Northern Center for Advanced Technology, or NORCAT, developed Scarab's drill, which can break through the surface and pull up samples as deep as one meter below the surface. After the drill brings up a sample, another onboard device crushes the material and it is dumped into a reactor called Resolve. The reactor was field tested for the first time in Hawaii, analyzing the chemical makeup of the soil first crushed and then baked and then the volatile gases that come off are measured to identify water abundance. Oxygen and other volatiles in smaller concentration are picked off by a gas chromatograph. Scarab doesn't need human help to avoid obstacles and reach distant goals, even in total darkness. The rover uses lasers to scan the terrain. It feeds that data to a navigation computer. The computer generates a detailed model of the landscape, allowing Scarab to safely drive towards its intended goal. When we're getting ready to drill, we do a large area scan in that mode. We advance to that area and then the, the scanner switches into a second mode, a triangulation mode, in which it gets millimeter resolution on the ground. And there you can pick out small pebbles or pick out rocks that you might want to avoid in the drilling. And then we do the final precision approach and begin drilling. Scarab has lots of other advanced features, including a suspension that allows the robot to squat and use its massive weight, more than 360 kilos, as an aid in drilling. It's also got a slick new set of wheels that will withstand the harsh lunar conditions better than rubber tires. Michelin has developed a Michelin lunar wheel that is designed basically to give you good traction characteristics and good wear characteristics over a wide range of temperatures, and environmental conditions found on the moon and on the Martian surfaces. Bart Thompson helped develop the new wheels. It provides a uniform pressure distribution just like you have with a pneumatic tire, only it does it without the air. Bart and his colleagues paid a lot of attention to math when designing these wheels, specifically ground contact pressure. That's the pressure applied to the ground by whatever is touching it, like the tires on a truck. Ground contact pressure can be used as one measure of the vehicle's ability to move over the ground, especially soft terrain. It's pretty simple to calculate ground contact pressure. Take the weight of an object, say you, and divide by the surface area of the part of you that is touching the ground. That's right, the area of your feet. So what 
we want to try to do to have very good traction characteristics is we want to have a low ground contact pressure. If you think about it, what you want is you want to have really big feet. The way you do that with a tire is you have low pressure. We don't have any inflation pressure, so we have to design our tire from the beginning to develop a nice, low, uniform contact pressure. This tire here is designed with a contact pressure of around 9 to 10 PSI. The bigger the surface area, the smaller the ground pressure, allowing for increased mobility. Check out this visual. On the beach, in heels, with a very small surface area, I'm not very mobile. But if I change into sneakers, with a much larger surface area, it's much easier for me to get around. Same thing for Scarab. Increasing the size of the contact area decreases the ground pressure, allowing Scarab to move more easily across the surface. Thanks to the scientists and engineers who built the Scarab prototype, one day in the very near future, robot prospectors will likely make it possible for humans to establish a permanent presence on the moon.